Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. I'd like to read to you um, from Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 9. It is written, There's a time to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. What many of you may find uncomfortable, what some of you may find disturbing, and what some of you may find harsh, is in fact imperative. It's imperative if we are truly captivated by biblical truth and the building and planting of Yahweh's word and thereby his kingdom within our very life. Demolition, demolition is a bedraggled trade in which the one called to demolish is oft deplored by those who hold dear what he is called to destroy. Never ever having the vision to see what must be created in its place. For us to grasp hold of the vision of Yahuwah, we have to grasp hold of what he has called us to pull down and to destroy so that he can build up what he has already written in his word, which will be built. It's all about Yahuwah's vision for his kingdom. Not men's visions, but Yahuwah's vision for his kingdom. We can either misalign or we can align ourselves with what he has in his word in this generation. But we have to be committed enough to root out and expose the delusional visions of men's kingdoms. We have to be committed enough. And there aren't enough saints out there that are committed enough to do that. We have to be willing to expose the visions and the dreams of tyrants and liars. In the book of Yasha, in the 75th, chapter, it tells us about the sons of Joseph. The sons of Joseph, they thought that they had the power and they thought they had the understanding and they thought that they had the strength and that they believed that the time was at hand when they should leave Egypt. So the sons of Joseph in the 180th year of their captivity, they left Egypt 30 years before the ordained date which was written out in the covenants given to Abraham. They weren't prepared spiritually. They trusted in gold and silver Oh yeah, they went off to the coin place and they they, they got their rice and beans and their gold and their silver and they were preparing to leave, to leave Egypt and go into the promised land. That is what they were doing. And they believed that they were so mighty and that they were so strong that they could just buy with their mammon the things that they needed. And they came and they came across the shepherds of Gath. And they tried to plunder their meat, tried to buy, tried to buy from them. And the shepherds of Gath went back to Gath and they told all the elders. And they made war against the children of Joseph. And then they went and told the Philistines. And they made war against the children of Joseph. And because they misread the word of Yahuwah, because they didn't listen, and because they thought they could do it in their strength, not Yahuwah's time, but in their strength, The children of Joseph were smitten and destroyed out in the nations. Yet there were ten that fled. 
ten that were wise enough to realize their mistake and they fled. All that to say this. I want to call out your attention to yet another rotting arm of the Levitical hierarchy that's trying to ensnare the Hebrew roots and messianic adherents. It comes to us through an organization called Etz Benai Yosef. Etz Benai Yosef. Very fitting name in light of the book of Yasher in the 75th chapter, wouldn't you say? You see, this outfit is very misguided as it postulates itself as biblical restoration when in actuality it peddles the visions and doctrines of demons conjured up in Basel, Switzerland in the late 19th century. But they do say on their website that they welcome others to contribute ideas and opinions and that they must learn to listen and not take offense if what others present isn't necessarily accepted. So I believe I'm going to bring forth my opinion, and it may not be necessarily accepted, but it is welcomed. Listen as I read to you their statement of belief encapsulating their writings and visions from their website, Etz Benai Yosef. Quote, for an, for an historical perspective, we are following the footsteps of our brother Judah under the leadership of such men as Theodore Herzl and David Ben-Gurion. The term Zionism was, co was coined in the late 19th century. These men, among many others, drove the movement that led to the establishment of the modern state of Israel. As Ephraimites, we are seeking to complete their work by bringing back the remainder of God's people who have been shut sown in the nations. Much can be learned by careful examination of the history of Zionism and work done by our brothers in Judah. So that's directly from their writings and visions. I call it false unity for unity's sake. Because we're told by the prophets, and we are given the pattern in the book of Yasha, in the 75th chapter, of what leaving early because you take it upon yourself, your own strength, and you misread the prophecies, what can happen? Zechariah tells us that if you leave too early, two-thirds in the state of Israel will be wiped out. Zechariah also very clearly tells us in the 10th chapter, it is not the work of men that will bring in those from the exile. It is the work and the mighty arm of Yahuwah alone. It is not the work of men that we are to join ourselves with, but we are to awaken to the supernatural work of Yahuwah. But you have to choose men and their visions, which is tyranny, or Yahuwah and his vision, which is inspiration and enlightenment. So I want to examine five things today from Etz Benai Yosef's writings and visions and let you, the Kedoshim, the saints, turn the pages of history and more importantly, the pages of your scriptures right in front of you and see if what they're selling you is truth. Okay? It's an adventure as we delve into history and scripture and see what aligns and what misaligns. So I'm going to start off by re-examining some statements, five statements, 